how do you know? How do you test if something is a function or not? Like you can look at the graphs, that's what we did before, right? How would you know? Since, I'll do it from here. So you can draw a line like going downwards, but mine's gonna go across. Since every input has one output and no more, okay, you can identify a function with something that we call the vertical line test. Now if you have a ruler with you, a ruler, I want you to place your ruler against your graphs that you've just drawn and we're going to do the vertical line test. All the vertical line test is, you take a vertical line and you place it across your relation, okay? If you can move it anywhere on your relation, which corresponds to any input, then you should have exactly one output and only one output, maximum. Right? So do you notice when you put it up against the straight line, when you put it up against the, what else did I give you, the trig function, when you put it up against the log curve, your ruler, your vertical line, when you test it, it only ever intersects once, do you notice that? And then you put it up against the unit circle, and what happens? It intersects twice. In fact, some functions will intersect more than twice. Have a think about what this would look like. Now, you've already got what y equals sine x looks like. It waves up and down and up and down and up and down, right? Yes. This is not going to wave up and down. It's going to wave to side. left to right from side to side. So when you put your vertical line against that, what's going to happen? <coughs> it's going to intersect an infinite number of times. It's not a function. <laughs> now, here's the thing, right? You can identify a function with a vertical line test. You can force any relation you like. You can force a relation to become a function. And this gets to a question which you guys asked me like at the beginning of the year. If or with a range restriction. I want you to look at that unit circle. I want you to look at the unit circle. What was its range again? Ne negative one to one, right? We actually say the natural range would be negative one to one, okay? Because that's just what occurs. You didn't have to do anything to it. That's just what the unit circle is, okay? But you can restrict the range. You can restrict that range to anything you like, but some of those restrictions will produce a function. Think about it, for example. If I restrict that, what part of the circle do I get? I get the top half, right? This is a semicircle now, it's not a circle anymore, but the part of the circle that I've got passes the vertical line test. Every value of x that you put in, you'll only get out one value of y. So that's a function now. It's a relation that we're forced with a range restriction to have just one input, one output every time. Okay? And we have to do this sometimes. For example, this guy that you have been using for years. It started as a relation. Here's the relation it started as. Okay, Draw this one with me. This one's important. What does it look like? You're so used to drawing parabolas that are facing up the normal way that this is a bit of a weird idea. See how x and y are swapped? So it's sideways. It looks like that. This is not a function. It's a relation. It's a relation. Right? Come in. Just before you run, think. How will I restrict this to make it a function? I'm going to do it in much the same way that I did this. In fact, exactly the same way. I'm just going to raise this part down here. Now it's a function. That's the square root of x. That's why the square root of x is not plus or minus whatever that value happens to be, like plus or minus 5, for instance. It's only the top one because we want it to be a function, not a relation. 